And so this was a, this was the process that the, the county decided to set up, um, and uh, they uh, they wanted to train their staff and to have uh, patients coming through here, uh, really to see if they could start doing these mass disaster clinics. You can see that it's a much quicker process than everybody being seen individually, and they're trying to basically do people in groups. Um, and uh, we were asked at UC Davis to uh, to use uh, Second Life to essentially build uh, a, an environment that was uh, identical to the, uh, the one that the county was using, uh, and then to run some of the county staff um, through this environment and see if we could train them in the environment as well as could be done face to face. Because as you can imagine, it's very expensive to bring maybe a couple of hundred staff down to be trained in this environment um, from all over the state. And, and you know, people move on, you've got to keep on doing the training. And so in theory, it should be much, much easier to use a, a, an environment like Second Life uh, to, to train staff to work in this sort of environment and to work in a different way from the way they normally work. So that's really what this whole process is about. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, it, it, we, we did the pilot, we in fact demonstrated that you could train uh, the, the staff in this environment, um, but uh, the, the, uh, essentially this was funded from money from, uh, from, uh, from the federal government, and um, that money ran out and was never replaced, and the state uh, didn't move forward this, with this project. So we, we, we keep it here as an interesting project, a nice way of doing things that I think would have worked very well. Um, but unfortunately, the state didn't take it up long term. Peter, uh, any Devard, thoughts or comments? Yep, yeah, Devard had a question of how you did um, the random variables. Do you mean for timing, like how long it takes people at particular stations, or? Well, the aim was to get people through the whole system here within literally about um, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Um, obviously, one of the interesting things about this whole environment is that um, you, you know, you could, uh, they wanted to test it out and, and see how long it really would take people. So they had people with, uh, you know, with, clock, with, with stopwatches and things watching the whole, watching the whole um, demonstration. Um, if, if I just turn around behind me, though, um, and click on here, you'll see I've just removed the roof. So you can see now um, one of the things we did very deliberately, somebody's just put the roof back on. Um, <laughs> and that was Tim, of course. Uh, so uh, if I remove the roof again, uh, one of the interesting things you can do with Second Life is um, uh, you can actually obviously then now page up and, and, uh, and you can have a look around and you can, you can look at all the, the whole workflow of the environment very much more easily here than, uh, and you probably can't, you probably can't hear me, I'm sorry, when I, uh, I'm sorry, you probably couldn't hear that because I was too far away from you. Um, but one of the nice things about uh, this sort of environment, it's so flexible that you can remove the roof and you can then essentially watch whatever training uh, program you're doing from a different position um, and uh, literally fly around above, uh, above what's happening and see what's happening with workflow, see if there are any blocks in the system, if, if uh, patients are sort of waiting. Um, uh, you, you know, and, and where you want to sort of send extra staff to try and help out at any particular time. Um, so uh, our, our hope was to be able to have observers, uh, you know, watching uh, whatever went on uh, actually uh, in, in the clinic itself. Um, so your question about how many patients were we able to get through in this sort of setup in an hour, we, we basically put with the bots that we created that ran through the, the setup automatically, um, we, uh, we were able to uh, get, um, you know, certainly we could just set rates of patients through. Um, uh, so that, uh, you know, they, they, they literally vary between, you know, 500 to 1,000 bots per hour going through the system. And then you uh, have to then see if, in fact, the if the clinicians who are doing the various different uh, uh, exercises to, to send, to, to, to do their assessments, can actually keep up with them. 
Um, and that's actually a more, a more effective way of, of really trying to look at the, the workflow. To, to answer your question, uh, Tim, about the boxes, no, the, the boxes in fact um, literally allowed us to have um, about 10 patients at any one time uh, that they would pass from box to box. Um, uh, and um, Gromit's saying we should we run some patients through. Um, I'm actually not sure if it's working. Do you want to go and have a quick look and see if you can run them through? Um, I, uh, the the, the starting box is out, is uh, just on the side there. Um, somebody's been uh, been playing with some of these systems. I'm not convinced it's actually going to work at the moment. So if you look where uh, Gromit is, he's actually just, he has actually run some patients through. Um, so I wasn't sure that this was actually working, but it looks like it is still working, which is good. This is one of the interesting problems with Second Life. We uh, uh, try and keep this a fairly private environment, um, but somebody's been in here and added a few things since I was last here. Um, and obviously, as you know, we, we let lots of people in because we do lots of teaching here. Um, the, the downside to that is that some people do play some games, and I think uh, somebody's been in here and, and uh, damaged some of our uh, bot-making uh, activities. Oh, that's good, right? So, so you can see how the patients are filling up this line over here, and then in theory, they should then, when once that line is is filled up, they should then should then move on to the next one, um, and you'll see them then gradually pass through the whole system. So you see them now passing on to the second line straight ahead. And this is just one way of mimicking what happens. And then, of course, they move from that line automatically to the registration desks where uh, somebody has to take their details. And then if you follow me, you'll see them starting to fill up the, uh, the, the, the environment where they're being consented in here. They're moving through fairly quickly at the moment, and there may, in fact, even be some through the other side. No, not yet. Okay, well, look, I'm afraid I'm going to have to get going. Um, the, um, you're welcome to, to stay. Ben and, uh, and Marty are able to stay around. Um, but thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's been an interesting experience. And, and do just make yourself home on Davis Island and, and within Second Life. And also thanks very much indeed to uh, to Ben and to uh, James and Marty. That's been really helpful having you here tonight. Thanks, Dr. Yellowies. Thanks, everyone, and thanks, Mike, for all your help, too.
Good I'll, night, everyone. Yeah, thanks, good night, everyone. I'll post the chat and um, any of the text that we've done here. Anything that was typed will get posted on our site tomorrow. So um, if you have any questions, just um, uh, yeah, ask on the list or send me a, a message. Okay. Good night, everyone.